The Raspberry Pi is an amazing device. It's a great device for just messing around with and having some fun if you're into tech, given how many things you can run on it. However, it's also a great utility if you want to run some low-powered servers, or even custom smart home devices, or retro game consoles, etc. However, one reason I haven't made more videos on the Raspberry Pi is that there kind of is a lot of setup in order to get one working. Whenever you want to play around with a Pi, you have to find a USB-C or a micro USB cable, depending on if you're using an older or newer Raspberry Pi. Then you have to dig out an HDMI cable, and no one owns a micro HDMI, which the Raspberry Pi 4 requires, so if you don't have a Raspberry Pi 4, I basically guarantee you don't have a micro HDMI cable. And then you have to dig out a keyboard and mouse, plug it into your TV, and you have to find another TV that isn't connected to your computer if you're using a desktop PC like me. And then you have to get a micro SD card and flash it. So, while the Raspberry Pi is cool, I just don't really like dealing with its setup process in order to use one. However, I got right here a device that I think will fix this issue for me. Quick disclaimer, I was sent this to review by the Cutie Pie team, however I am not obligated to say anything and they aren't seeing this video before you are. Anyways, Cutie Pie itself is very clean looking, it's made out of white plastic but the handle is made out of metal, and speaking of the handle, it can be used as a kickstand, however it doesn't rotate a full 360 degrees, it's kinda limited at this angle at the max, which makes the tablet stand upright at a very steep angle and it can be awkward to look at sometimes. I think I'd prefer if it could like fold all the way in and maybe have like an indent on like the bottom of the tablet. However, I understand that that would make packaging up the hardware kind of hard because then there'd be just an area of the tablet where there's no room for anything. And I totally understand why a device like this has a handle like this. Like this handle wouldn't make sense on the typical Android tablet. However, given that this is a Raspberry Pi and given how thick this tablet is, I think it works in this situation. In terms of the size, it's about the size of an iPad mini, although it is pretty thick. In fact, here is a Raspberry Pi 3 for comparison. It's about the size of a Raspberry Pi 3's Ethernet port. The display on it is good enough, but don't expect anything amazing. And it also has a camera on the back, which I would compare to a cheap laptop camera. It does take okay photos, nothing to write home about. They're not great, but it is usable. However, I think it would make a little bit more sense if this back camera was a front-facing camera. And I don't actually know why they're using a back camera. Like, this is a tablet, especially considering that you're going to be using Linux on this. I don't see someone really going up to something and taking, like, a photo. Like, ooh, I'm going to take a photo of that. Pretend that's a camera sound. I just don't really see anyone doing that, and I think front-facing camera would make a bit more sense just in case you want to do like zoom or jitsi calls or something but it is a nice bonus feature to have ports wise right here we have a usb 3 a usb c a micro hdmi a power button and a micro sd card slot right here technically it does have less io than the standard raspberry pi 4 since it does only have one usb port and it's missing an ethernet port but I'm gonna give it a pass since it's a tablet. If it had an ethernet port, they'd have to make the tablet even thicker and it's already pretty thick. However, I would appreciate it if there's a second USB port on here just because there's still not that many people who have USB-C devices. And it'd be nice if I could plug in like a USB keyboard right here, like I have a wireless one, which you're probably gonna wanna do. And also at the same time, plug in something else, like maybe a mouse, although it does have a touch screen, or a USB flash drive, stuff like that. I think this could use a second USB port, but I don't think it's that big of a deal if you get one of those keyboards that has like a mouse built in like this one. And that USB-C port is also there in case you do have a USB-C device. In terms of the battery, the battery is not anything to write home about. The hardware is 500 milliamp hours, which if you were looking at an Android phone, is quite good for something like an Android phone. However, on this, it drains pretty dang quick. I'm assuming this is software related because I've seen this issue before on devices like the Pine Phone where the battery sucks on launch but then the battery gets better with software improvements. So hopefully they can implement some battery saving features but at the same time the Raspberry Pi 4 is not really made to be in a portable device like this so there might be some power drawing issues so while it does have a 5000 milliamp hour battery it is kind of mid battery life 
wise. So that's a basic rundown of the hardware, but what about the software? Well, the software is just Raspbian with the Cutie Shell application. Cutie Shell is essentially a web browser with a settings manager. Basically, take your OS a settings app and merge it with Chrome, and that's Cutie Shell. It is very smooth and fluid, but at the same time, if I wanted a web browser, I'd much prefer using my computer or honestly even my phone. And the main reason for this is the software just kind of feels incomplete. Chrome OS works because even though it's a browser based OS, it still feels like it belongs on a desktop. And this is just settings on the top and then tabs on the left. So while QD Shell is kind of cool, I would not buy this device specifically for QD Shell. It's kind of just an extra feature that is tossed into the package. Luckily behind QD Shell, we have full Raspbian, which works pretty dang well. I could not get any other OSs running out of the box, and this is a software issue. However, you can get some OSs working by applying a device tree yourself, which sounds complicated, but theoretically you should just be able to boot an SD card on like a stock Raspberry Pi 4, then add the kernel drivers and then put the micro SD card back in the Cutie Pie and it should work fine for some distros. Overall though, it doesn't matter too much because you can do pretty much anything you'd want to do on a Raspberry Pi through Raspbian. In fact, Raspbian could even be complete enough to replace a full laptop if you connect a keyboard to this thing and just bring the keyboard around with you. And you're fine with the limitations of only having two gigs of RAM. This could theoretically replace your laptop with Raspbian if you carry around a keyboard. Raspbian as a distro is kind of a jack of all trades, master of none for it to run. And I think that's a good thing because that provides a lot of flexibility on what you can do with this tablet software wise. At the same time, Raspbian's not designed for a touchscreen. There are still some bugs. And so if you wanted like a tablet to daily drive without a keyboard, <laughs> this can't really replace something like an iPad yet. The last thing I wanted to talk about is that the hardware in this thing is actually almost fully open source. In fact, I believe the only component that isn't open source is the Raspberry Pi compute module this uses. Although, I am wrong if the Raspberry Pi compute module is open source, I haven't actually checked that. Everything else about this hardware is open source, so that includes the boards, the PCB, basically everything. And that makes this a very hackable device, especially considering you don't have to reverse engineer it or anything because everything is open source. Even if you open it up, the insides are very simple. It's just a battery, some display ribbons, and then a board that the Raspberry Pi 4 compute module hooks up to. So if you ever want to hardware mod this, this should be relatively easy. So would I recommend it? I wouldn't recommend this as like an iPad replacement. However, if you want a hackable toy device, this is perfect for that. The software is Raspbian, which gives you a lot of abilities, and you aren't really limited by this tablet for it being a niche hardware device since the hardware is a Raspberry Pi. Plus, this should be pretty good for modding due to the hardware being open source and the software being relatively easy to port stuff over to since you just have to get the device tree working. And overall, I think this is a great toy for hackers. So that's the video. Thanks to patrons that contribute $5 or more a month, including John Sass, Tech Hut, Frank, Jim Peter, Sam Covet, and Mitchell Vantino, and I'll see you soon.